Yeah, some yeah. will get her some oven mitts. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, that that's, looks good. That's why he had them, and then Jenny <laughs> She's didn't like, get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> it looks that good. You gotta just dive in. Mm -hmm. And props to our producer. Yesterday was what? Bama Lamb. Today, Yummy Yum. Yes, Yummy yum, yum. 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 Isn't that a Bieber song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, everyone. It is what? Now, Wednesday. We have made it halfway through the week. Glad you're with us. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Ebronpour. Thanks so much for being here. And let's send it over to Evan. Uh, pizza for breakfast sounds good. Pizza and the right Beebs. Oh, I just had cashews. <laughs> that was all I was dealing with this morning. But pizza sounds delicious. Uh, good morning. Now, happy Wednesday to you. Halfway through this week, Coronado is a little bit hazy. As we start off the morning, we've had some patchy morning fog. But uh, besides that, you're smooth sailing for the day. Temperatures are going to warm up by a few degrees compared to yesterday and Monday. We had pretty stagnant air out there and stagnant temperatures. Today will warm up about five degrees in most cases. Uh, but outside right now, for the most part, in the low to mid 50s and warming up as the sun comes out. Visibility looking all right. Seven miles in Oceanside, nine in Carlsbad, eight in Miramar. Jenny's checking up on traffic this morning. Uh, happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday. You know, it's been quiet. There is one crash that is going to impede your drive right now, and it's causing backups. Here's the five North Bond side. Several cars involved, three or four right near Lucadia Boulevard. Currently, single lane is blocked. Crews are there. You will have to move over lane, slow down. You are down to about 12 miles an hour on that northbound commute. It's only about a two, three mile stretch as you're approaching Lucadia and that crash site. Southbound drives okay. One other thing, north on the five at Mission Bay, left lane is blocked because of an obstruction, but no other big backups. Back to you. From seeing red to seeing orange, today marks a new day of hope for a lot of San Diegans, including our businesses. Yeah, orange now, the color of hope here. Our county is now in the less restrictive orange tier, which does pave the way for more reopenings, higher capacity in places. News 8's Chris Grow joining us live along the Embarcadero with how this is going to impact all of us. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta. And look, a lot of good news really all at once yesterday for not only the state of California, but here in San Diego County, having the ability now to go from that red tier to the orange tier. And then we're looking at in June potentially having no tiers at all restricting any businesses. So let's start with that orange tier right now and what it means for not only you at home, but also for these businesses, potentially even your employers. As we've been saying, we know that it will be a big change for shopping and retail centers, no capacity limit at stores or malls, restaurants, museums, movies and churches. They're going to be moving up to 50% indoor capacity. We know that bars that previously didn't serve food indoors, well, they're going to be able to serve outdoors and Places like Petco Park are going to be able to enjoy a lot more fans. 33% increase or an increase to 33% from 25%. Now, as for getting rid of that blueprint for a safer economy and getting rid of the color coded restriction tiers, the state announced that yesterday because of the fact that we've had more than 20 million vaccine doses administered, 4 million administered in those hard hit low income areas. And so what it would look like is starting on June 15th, most everyday activities and business operations that were previously restricted can resume all at once across the state, not county by county. There are conditions, though, to make sure that that is possible. The vaccine supply for those 16 and older who wish to be inoculated needs to be sufficient and hospitalization rates need to be stable and low. We're going to keep a close eye, not just on that hospitalization rate and number, but actually understanding who's in the hospital and whether those who are vaccinated are the ones who are hospitalized. And as for that 16 and older, remember the entire state is going to be moving to that benchmark for vaccine app appointments on April 15th. So, you, you know, that that is the timing that they're looking at 16 and older April 15th and then potentially by June 15th having the entire economy open. Of course, that is going to come with one caveat that mask mandate will still be in place. Eric and Netta. Chris Grove, thank you very much for explaining that. And now to an update, the County Board of Supervisors just approved a measure to waive those event permit fees. This is for live events through the next fiscal year. Now, the plan was approved late last night by the board. Board Chair Nathan Fletcher estimates that it will help the industry save nearly $2 million. 
the one dose Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine is being administered at different locations in San Diego today. 1,000 doses will be available at the Jackie Robinson Family YMCA in Lincoln Park. This is happening from 8 to 5 by appointment only. This event happens every first Wednesday of the month. Cal Fire is also offering appointments at the San Ysidro Health Center in Campo today. They will be at different locations, though, throughout the week. We'll let you know. It has been three months since uh, Chula Vista mother went missing, and there are a lot of questions surrounding the disappearance of this woman, Maya Millette. News 8's Allison Royal is live from Chula Vista now with what police are now saying, as well as the new efforts to help with this search. Three months. Wow. All right. Allison. Yeah, it has been three months, Eric and Netta, and people say that the 39 year old mother of three would just not get up and leave her kids for three months. Very much not like her is what the family members have repeatedly told us. So the Chula Vista Police Department has a message for people. It said that if you happen to have any information pertaining to this case, please share it with them rather than with social media. That is the most efficient way to not compromise the investigation and get them information that they need. It also said that it is working with the FBI and Summer Steffens office. Office. Even though it has been three months, as you said, Maya's family continues to advocate for her safe return. She also goes by May. Today from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., El Pollo Local Grill in Bonita and Otay Ranch are donating 30% of sales to help search efforts. Just show the cashier a picture of the flyer from the Help Find Maya Facebook page. Many people have questions for her husband, Larry, who has repeatedly denied any involvement with her case. One attorney claiming to work with the family said that the day Maya scheduled an appointment with a divorce attorney is the last day that anybody happened to see her. News 8 has previously spoken to Larry, most recently over text with our David Gottfriedson. This is what Maya's family had to say about her disappearance a while back, and they are still searching for answers. We just hope that whoever has the answers comes forward and they see the community. They, we all need answers for Maya. And there are actually two events planned this weekend. There will be a search on Saturday and then a vigil and rally on Sunday. Now, the Help Find Maya Facebook page is where you can find information about all of this, which we have on our website, cbs8.com. They are asking anybody who owns a drone and maybe has a few hours of free time on Saturday to come out to the search. They think that drones can really help them maximize the search area. They also haven't released a location of where that will be yet. Netta and Eric. Anything will help. Allison, thank you very much. Well, concerned neighbors rally in El Cajon to push back against a proposal to place two registered sex offenders near their homes and their schools. 78 year old Douglas Badger is one of them and has a long rap sheet for sexual assault that began in the 1970s. He was convicted of child molestation and kidnapping, among other charges. Neighbors also say they were just notified about Merle Wakefield, whose criminal history they don't know. We live 500 feet away from this house that they're supposedly going to house these violent predators at, so we're outraged. I want to know how they're going to monitor these guys and how they're going to make sure that our neighborhood is safe. The final day for public comments about Badger's placement will be this Friday. Padre superstar Fernando Tatis Jr. won't need surgery for his left shoulder injury, at least for now. The team put him on the 10-day injured list. Tatis, as you know, suffered that partial dislocation of his joint during Monday's game. The team says he has full range of motion. They hope that the rest and rehab will allow him to recover. We're going to have highlights from last night's game coming up here later this hour. Massages, whatever it takes. We know shoulders are complicated. Yeah. So, uh, hope he gets that recovery. And look at this view. Where is this, Del Mar? This is, uh, yes, Del Mar. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, happy uh, <laughs> a Wednesday. Foggy. I was going to say, I've never gotten a massage. What like, never are had you a talking massage. about? Yeah. No way. You, are, weird, you right? have not lived. Um, well, I just like, I, it's never happened. Like, you know, obviously growing up, I never really did. And then like, I have never been like, oh, I just guess I'll go get a massage. I don't. Achy? I guess you're young. I haven't got one in a long time. I yet. haven't got one in a long time because I think the last one I got, I just fell asleep during. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds nice. Yeah. Wait a nap. <laughs> hey, uh, let's take a look at your forecast for your Wednesday. We are about halfway, or at least almost halfway for some of us, if you're counting the middle of the day as that halfway point. Wind advisory will take effect at 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, we've got that tan color on your screen indicating where this wind advisory will be. You got mountains and deserts mainly incorporated in this. Coastal and inland, we're not going to be encountering that wind advisory, but it will 
still be breezy at times. Uh, looking at your highs for this afternoon, 72 along the coast, meaning that we'll gain a few degrees compared to your Monday and your Tuesday. Those were mostly in the upper 60s today. We should make it to the 70 degree range. Mountains are going to make it into the mid 70s and deserts. Yet another day of 90 degree temperatures. They have been hanging on to the heat all week long, and that only continues here on out. Uh, coastal five day shows that we are dropping by your uh, afternoon high temperatures a few degrees each day, but this really doesn't show too much of a change in those temperatures. We'll go from 75 to 72 tomorrow, maybe 70 on Friday, still hanging out in the upper 60s and low 70s, about average for this time of year. Not anywhere close to record territory set back in 1989, 93 degrees. We still are below average. We normally would have expected some rain so far this month. Only uh, we haven't seen anything, uh, but normally we would have expected nearly a quarter of an inch. That sunset comes tonight at 7 13.